Previously in Iceland. I wandered the streets of Reykjavik, snorkeled in the Silfa Fisher, and saw some amazing waterfalls. Now I'm driving the F roads to explore the interior of Iceland with a goal of getting to a mysterious volcano. Iceland's interior is a colder, mostly uninhabited area of sand, mountains, and lava fields. The only way to access this remote area is by using the F roads. The F stands for the word Fjall, which in Icelandic means mountain, so these are mountain roads. These roads are built and maintained by using tractors that plow a path through the lava rock to gain access to the interior of Iceland, which is only generally accessible by the public once the snow is melted for the year. The first rule is that you must have a 4x4 capable vehicle. The country has dealt with too many tourists taking all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive vehicles onto these roads only to get stranded and ending them with a $6,000 towing fine. The second most important rule is that you must remain on the road at all times unless extreme circumstances arrive. Driving off the built paths can result in a $350,000 ISK fine. A more modern rule is that electric vehicles must not do any of the water crossings, which can be quite frequent here in Iceland. As adventurers, we should respect these rules so that we can keep these roads open and continue to explore in the future. The plan today is to make it to a place where you can camp known as Landamalagarilar. Yeah, good luck with that one. My personal goal today is to not get stuck. This isn't exactly the terrain I'm used to in the Rocky Mountains of Alberta, and I'm not driving my F-150, and I'm still learning what this Jiminy is really capable of. In fact, I think I could fit this little vehicle in the back of my truck. With almost no help to be found out here, I did bring a pair of traction boards all the way from Canada to help out if I do get stuck. As I climb higher in elevation, the colors out here are amazing. Among the black sand of volcanic rock and the moss and different types of plants that are trying to survive this harsh climate, the colors contrast each other in a magnificent way. Sitting among these mountains is the glacier Mirjajoko. This glacier is the fourth largest ice cap in Iceland and covers 600 square kilometers or 232 square miles. At its highest peak, it stands 1,500 meters tall. And scientists estimate that it is around 8,400 years old. As this glacier continues to melt, it continuously creates new rivers and more waterfalls here in the south part of Iceland.
Although this landscape is amazing, there's somewhere I am desperately trying to get to. So we're going to carry on. After kilometers of lava rock, the place I've been dreaming about seeing since deciding to come to Iceland is finally in view. There's only one thing standing in between me and my goal, and it will become the biggest obstacle I've ever faced in the last four years of overlanding. Between all the rain they had this summer and the glacier's runoff, there is a hundred rivers in front of me without any way of being able to judge how deep they are. Sometimes you just have to let luck take the wheel. Sometimes the reward is worth the risk. This is Melefell, standing 200 meters tall and formed 10,000 years ago when eruptions in Iceland caused the glacier's ice sheets to retreat. This mountain is amazing, surrounded by an ocean of black sand. We also bumped into two other overlanders that had much more capable rigs for this journey than I did. We all seemed to be traveling in the same direction, so at this point it was time to head back across the Valley of Rivers and make our way more north 
Tackling obstacles is a little bit easier when you know other people with capable vehicles are around. And when those vehicles belong to the locals, they can also give you some friendly advice. Due to the unusual wet summer they were having, this river is too high and would be impassable with the vehicle that I have. Making the goal I have at camping at Lundemanger is impossible at this point. I would have to backtrack four hours and get on a new road to make my way all the way on the only other route there is. It was nice to see another Suzuki Jimny with bigger tires, a lift kit, and a snorkel kit that could achieve a river crossing like this, but my stock vehicle would simply flood the engine and we'd be dead in the water. So after meeting new people, it was time to turn around. But this trip was a victory because Malefell was amazing and the journey to get there was an epic one at that. After all, it's hard to be disappointed when you're here in Iceland. Back on the ring road, we would push east to try and get ahead of our schedule and find a new place to camp for the night. It's morning on the third day and the sun is shining, which means I get the opportunity to charge up some of the batteries for my cameras. This whole trip is based on solar with a solar blanket that I brought from Canada, keeping me charged up for the whole eight days I'll be here. And while the sun is doing its thing, I'll get breakfast going. A short distance from camp, and there was a hike up to the glacier that you could see in the distance. As large as Venusfeldjokull is in person, it is just a part of the more massive glacier, the Vatnjökull, the largest glacier in all of Europe. In 1967, this area was declared a national park. This part of the glacier is 8 kilometers long, 800 meters wide, and has a 2,000 meter climb to the top. For those that don't know, a glacier is formed when the snow on the top of a mountain exceeds the space that the top of the mountain can hold and starts to expand and pack down over hundreds of years of snowfalls, eventually turning into ice. This glacier is also Hollywood famous, being in movies like Batman Begins and a set for the Game of Thrones series on multiple occasions as well as the North Wall is filmed right here.
As these glaciers melt over the years, they create frozen lagoons, icebergs, and will eventually reach the ocean. And with another bucket list destination on the books, that's exactly where we're headed next, to see where these glaciers meet the ocean. As day three of this eight day adventure continues. On the next episode, I'll take you to the Diamond Beach, visit a Viking village, and drive the East Coast, heading north to our next adventure.